Hello and thank you for clicking on my channel, Kelly Legends Media. I'd like to thank all the subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button down below. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up like button. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I drop a video, hit that notification bell. And you'll be notified. You can go back later and watch the video when you have time. Okay, so this is a, a True Crime Tuesday by Cali Legends Media. Every Tuesday I tell a little story about some type of uh, activity in the past. Now, I know a lot of my subscribers, are they get concerned about what I talk about and stuff. Some of this stuff um, that I talk about, if it even really happened, if it's even really true, um, you know, happened a long, long time ago. I'm sure just by statutes of limitation, I don't think um, I could be charged for, for any of this stuff. It's just been too long, you know. Anyway, so this story, this story begins, let me set the, let me set the scene a little bit. So I'm walking around in my neighborhood, right? It's late at night. Yeah, I've been down in my neighborhood uh, most of the weekend. And, uh, you know, I, I call the mother of my kids. My, I have uh, more than one baby's mama. So I'm call, calling the mother of my first three sons, okay? And, uh, and she don't answer, right? So I start thinking all kinds of stuff. During this time, we're fighting, we're arguing, right? But well, she's not home. It's late at night. I'm like, man, what's up, you know? Or maybe she is home, you know, doing something she's not supposed to be. Or in my mind, she's not supposed to be. So now I'm like, man, I got to get over there, you know? It's late. The buses aren't running anymore. So I start strolling, right? And I'm thinking, man, I got to get me a vehicle. After some time, I find a, I find a car with the that little butterfly ignition but I notice it's not it's not all the way back it's it's too forward so being that it was suspect in my mind I opened the car get in it I test it and as soon as I, I just barely turned it man the dash lights light up start it up and I'm gone so I go I go to the pad right so like I'm ready you know like it I'm ready for whatever whatever uh <laughs> whatever I see, whatever I come across, or whatever, you know, I'm thinking all kinds of stuff in my brain. And uh, no, I'm not on stalker mode. I hadn't gone that far, but I was, I was, I was, uh, <laughs> I was on the edge. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so uh, I knock. She don't answer, man. I'm looking inside. You know, I'm like, man, looks like she's not here, or she's just not answering. You know, so I go around and and knock on the bedroom window and I look inside and no, she's not there. So I says, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go in and kick it and wait till she gets back, right? So I go in the pad and uh, I get something to eat, watch TV for a while and she don't show up. So I, I go to bed, right? So wake up the next morning, still not there. Make myself something to eat, clean my mess and I take off. I said, oh, hell with it. I'm going back to the neighborhood, right? Figure I'll get with her later. So I go and I walk to the bus stop. I'm not worried about that car. I don't want, to, want nothing to do with that car because I'm thinking it's hot, probably hot already. They probably noticed it gone. They probably reported it. And I ain't trying, I'm out on bail. I'm not trying to, you know, get another case for, uh, for uh, borrowing a vehicle without permission, you know? So uh, what happens? I'm sitting there for a long time and no bus, right? Then somebody was kind enough to stop and tell me, hey, you waiting for the bus? I said, yeah. He says, no, nah, that's it, man. The last bus was at 10 o'clock. They ain't running. They're not running today. They just run up until 10 o'clock and, and that's it. I'm like, all right. So I'm thinking, man, it's only one way back. I'm going to have to go jump in that car. It's got to be careful. So I go back get in the car and I start driving back to the neighborhood right well when I get back to the neighborhood I'm thinking well you know what I'm gonna uh, go by this mechanic shop because I know the mechanic sister has a car just like this so I pull up and I'm like hey uh, hey so and so you you need anything off this vehicle right here he says yeah he says uh, the front seats um, I'm gonna need the bumper um, the air cleaner and and he named a bunch of stuff that that he wanted off the car so i said cool so i take the car over to to my mom's pad and i, I loosen the bolts in the front seat and i get everything ready for him but i can't get to the back bumper i got to get him 
from the inside. I had to open the trunk. I didn't have nothing to open it with. So I go back to the shop, right? And he gives me a little something to, to pop the little, uh, the little where you put the key so it could open with a screwdriver, right? So I pop the, I pop the trunk and I'm gonna take the bumper bolts off, but it's full of stuff, you know? I mean, there's Sawzaws, uh, uh, Makita Sawzaws, there's drills, there's uh, skill saws, there's a toolbox, a gang of stuff. So I get all that stuff and I take it out and, and, and he has a boat right there in his shop. So I, I'm putting everything, stashing it behind the boat and stuff, you know? And um, he's, he's getting the parts I already loosened and stuff, right? So while I'm in the trunk, there's two big gunny sacks, you know, in the back, full of papers and, and uh, magazines, all kinds of stuff, right? And I'm moving them and this envelope slides out and you know when you get a deck of cards and you and you maybe throw them on the table how they how they fan out like they spread out well when that envelope came out a bunch of of bills just like fanned out right there and i looked and i'm like damn excuse me there was a few hundreds and, and mostly 50s so i get it and and i'm already satisfied with that you know i put it in my pocket and uh I find another envelope. So now I got I got two envelopes now. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm gonna probably just let him keep the, the parts that I that he has and I'm gonna I'm gonna bone out and I'll come back for these tools and stuff after, you know? So I tell him about the tools, I tell him hey, I'll be back and I take off, right? So I go and I, I, I stash the car and uh, I take off walking, right? So I'm going down Whittier, different stores and stuff. I'm buying a gang of t-shirts, shirts, pants, t two pairs of uh, tennis shoes, gang of clothes, man. I'm walking with like, I don't know how many bags, you know, plus I have one of my younger brothers with me and I'm hooking him up and he has a bunch of bags and we're walking, right? And it's hot. And right down the street, there's a car lot, right? So I said, shit, I'm gonna go over to the car lot, man, and see what they got, you know, if they have any nice cars for a reasonable price. Yeah, sure enough, I picked me up a, a, a car there, right? Paid the cash for it. So now I'm driving around, you know, I'm all nice clothes, nice car, some cash in my pocket, but I run out of money, right? So I'm thinking, man, I, you know, I still got all those tools. I got the toolbox, but I would like to keep those. Man, all kinds of stuff's going through my head. I says, you know what? I'm going to go back and check that car again. <laughs> so I go back and I pop the trunk and now I'm checking it more carefully, you know, looking through things very, very carefully and. Yeah, I found a grip of more money, right? Well, the first time when I had went, on, uh, I took off from the mechanic shop when I first found the first two bundles, it was $14,000. I was in my mom's bathroom on the floor counting money, making stacks, and I'm yelling. I'm like, Chow, yeah, I mean, I'm all happy and shit, you know? My mom's banging the door. Mijo, mijo, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, mom, everything's all right. Everything's going to be all right. Don't trip, you know, I'll be right out. You sure, mijo? You sure you're all right? <laughs> So I go out, I'm, I'm happy, man. I, I, I break mom off some money I, and my littlest brother some feria and I pay her for belt. She had bailed me out, so I paid her the money I owed her for the bail. I took my other brother with me. That's when we were shopping, right? So now I'm caught up with the story. That's That was part of the story. It's actually the second time I'm recording this. The first time, I don't know why, but it didn't save. Anyways, so I had went back to that car Again, because I had ran out of money and I found another little bundle, right? And uh, long story short, I, I made sure when I, before I left that car alone that there was nothing in it, you know? And I ended up giving the car to, to, uh, to one of my younger homies and it ended up getting impounded. It, the owner got it back and everything. And... I found out who the owner was, you know, and yeah, he he was dirty, you know. He wasn't about to report this this uh, <laughs> this money or anything, you know. So I know it was cool, but that car could have belonged to somebody, somebody serious, you know, and and that could have meant my that could have meant meant my my demise, you know, behind that. And uh, that being said, you know. Uh, my mind and my jealousy and my thoughts that night got the best of me. Had me take this car 
And then uh, uh, a bunch of unfortunate incidences caused me to go further with it and further than I expected. I ended up getting back in the car, driving it back, getting these tools, this money, all of this stuff, which increased the dollar value of the crime, which meant I would have got more time if I would have got caught, right? Plus, I was out on bail on another case, you know? So, we have to watch what we let uh, let our minds lead us into, you know what I mean? You know, some jealous thoughts, you know, uh, some... some uh, Suspicion led me to start committing a crime that led me to do other things, you know, and in the end, I could either got killed by whoever it belonged to, but they were somebody, you know, and found out that it was me, um, or I could have been arrested, you know, which would have been all bad because it would have revoked my bail. And of course, I would have got additional time we just got to be careful, you know, on, on, on what we let our minds lead us into, you know. We got to be control of those things, you know, because um, the last place anybody wants to be is incarcerated, to be in jail and prison, especially right now. Right now is the worst time to to be in, in I know, in L.A. County. You don't want to go there right now, man. It, it's all bad right now. Um, I'm going to do a video about L.A. County when it wasn't like this, but... Right now, it's all bad. And you don't want to be in the system, in the California prison system right now, because there's too much happening. You know, it, it's 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 bad right now. So uh, let's be careful what we do. Let's hang on to our freedom like it's something valuable, because it is. It's the most valuable thing that uh, people like myself and, and other young men who may not be uh, thinking the best way, you know. Um, but let's, let's, let's try to make good decisions. Decisions that don't lead us uh, down that down that road, you know, and uh, let's be out here for our families, for our loved ones, for our kids. And so we can enjoy all the beautiful things there's out here to enjoy in life, you know. And uh, when our family needs us, we'll be here to respond uh, instead of us being incarcerated, them having to take care of us and spend their resources and their time taking care of us for bad decisions we make. Stay safe. Be strong. Stay free, please. God bless each and every one of you that follow me here to the end. And anybody who watched this video, God bless you too. Even if you're not with me still and your families. And uh, I hope to see you that are still with me in the next video. And uh, God bless you. Thank you.